Hello, my lovely students. Today is going to be the first time I'm going to be interacting with you with a video. Now, in order not for us to waste a lot of data, my videos will be divided into parts so that we don't have difficulty in uploading. For today's lecture, I'll be bringing the part one of malaria, which will be made up of introduction up to what we can do in preventing malaria. My name is Fam Mark Bequin. Malaria is a mosquito-borne infectious disease caused by a parasite called the Plasmodium parasite. Let's take note. Malaria is transmitted by a mosquito, the female Anopheles mosquito. But what causes malaria is the Plasmodium parasite. Let's not be confused between what causes malaria and what transmits malaria. The effect of malaria on people of all ages is quite immense. It is very serious, however, in pregnant women and children because they have a less immunity to the disease. Children normally that are affected are children five years and below. Now, in pregnant women, malaria can cause anemia and also can lead to miscarriages, stillbirth, underweight babies, and sometimes maternal death. And this is something that the government have been pushing for us to reduce it. Now, it can also cause another form of malaria that is called the cerebral malaria, which is the parasites entering the brain and the patient who show signs of neurological symptoms, whereby that the patient will have fits and sometimes they are convulsing or they are not able to uh, uh, think very clearly. It is estimated that about 2% of children who recover from such type of malaria, that is cerebral malaria, may suffer permanent brain damage, including epilepsy. It also affects negatively on their learning abilities and they are not able to attain to academic heights where they are supposed to be. So we see that malaria is a threat to human capital accumulation, which also constitutes a key factor in our economic development as a country. We are not able to develop because the, if you develop, that means you have very good human resource. Now, the main problem of malaria is a challenge it throws to our human development. And it's both a cause and a consequence of why we are underdeveloped. In Ghana, malaria is the number one cause of morbidity. Morbidity means that people are not able to move, they are bedridden, they, they stay at one place, they can't go to work, they can't go to school, they can't do anything. So malaria accounts for about 60, 40 to 60% of such patients. It is also the leading cause of mortality in children under the age of 5 years. Please let's take note of this. Now we're talking about death of children under the age of 5. Malaria is the leading cause. And that's a significant cause of also adult mobility and leading cause of work days loss due to the illness. There are five main species of this plasmodium parasite that we should know. And most importantly, the one that is very common in this country, Ghana, is plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium falciparum. A lot of the test kits that we have in our pharmacies, the RDTs test kits, are able to test and pick the plasmodium falciparum. If you use a test kit for plasmodium vivax or plasmodium ovale or plasmodium malari or the nolisi to check for plasmodium falciparum to be negative. So anytime you want to do a test, let's check whether they've written PF, that's plasmodium falciparum, which is the commonest plasmodium parasite we are going to see in Ghana. Now, if you say something is zoonosis, zoonosis means that this can be transmitted from animals into humans. So the current COVID-19 that we are having is believed to, to also be zoonotic. We can acquire it from animals. So malaria too can be acquired from an animal to a man, normally through the bite of a infested female Anopheles mosquito. How is malaria transmitted? Malaria transmitted. Malaria is naturally transmitted by the bite of a female Anopheles mosquito. Please let's take note, a female Anopheles mosquito. Now, when a mosquito bites an infected, infected person and takes a small amount of their blood, 
And if this blood contains the plasmodium parasites, the parasite develops within the mosquito. And about in just about one week, when the mosquito takes its nest blood meal, the parasites are injected into the mosquito's saliva, the, into the person's being bitten. Now, what this one basically means that at one point in time, the mosquitoes may not have the plasmodium parasite. But once they bite somebody with the infection and they take their blood, their blood sample with the plasmodium parasites may come to the mosquito's salivary gland. And when they bite another person, the infection is transmitted to that person. Now, after a period between two weeks and sometimes, depending on the type of parasite, it can take several months or years before it is shown. The malaria parasite will start to multiply within the red blood cells, causing symptoms that include fever and headache. Now, when you go to our website at www.fexenscollege.online, there are videos of the malaria parasites and how they are transmitted in humans. So I recommend you find time to visit our website and you can get some videos to watch on the malaria parasites. In severe cases, the Disease may also worsen, leading to coma and death. The malaria parasite also attack other parts of the body apart from the red blood cells, which sometimes really that's what causes the anemia. They can also at attack our spleen, the liver, and the brain causing cerebral malaria. So let's take note. There are four main body parts that this organism is attacking. The red blood cells, the spleen, the liver, and the brain. How do we prevent malaria? In fact, the simplest thing we can do is prevent a bite. In as much as we may want to use a lot of other methods, so far as we stay safe from the mosquitoes that are infested, that means that we are not getting the, the malaria con the disease. However, we can also attack the various stages in the development of the cycle of the mosquito. The mosquito goes through four stages, and that one to add the video later on for you to see. And I think for this video, I'll post it on either your WhatsApp platform or still on our website. Okay, it's called the complete metamorphosis. Now, we can decide to attack them. For example, the adult mosquito will lay eggs. We can destroy the eggs. The eggs may hatch to larvae. We can destroy the larva of the mosquito. For example, spraying kerosene on the water surface so that they cannot breathe. However, this is not also recommended because it has been seen that the plasmodium parasite grow in fresh water, which we also drink. So we can introduce fish and fingerlings into the water to consume it. However, if we have any empty containers in our house, in our workplaces, if we have gutters, if we have flower beds that have collected water, this should be emptied because these become breeding sites for the mosquitoes, uh, um, for them to breed and lay, lay their eggs and breed. Also, if you have flowers in your house, tall grasses, dark places, in garages, you should make sure that the place is kept clean so that it doesn't serve as a breeding site for the mosquitoes. Malaria transmission can also be reduced by preventing the mosquito bite, as I said earlier on, by sleeping under the insecticide treated nets, normally called them mosquito nets, but the right where the insecticide treated nets, the ITNs. Some people use the insecticide repellents, or we can use the mosquito controlled measures such as spraying the insecticides inside houses and draining standing water where mosquitoes may lay their eggs. Now, although many are underdeveloped, the challenge of producing a widely available vaccine that can prevent us from getting malaria is still not being done. Okay, recently I heard that they were doing trials in Tamale and other parts of Ghana that you can get a vaccine that when you get the injection, you didn't get malaria again. But we've not been very successful. Trials are still ongoing and we hope we become successful that we can stop this deadly disease. Now, this is end of part one. And I wish that you take a short quiz yourself, ask yourself whether you'll be able to underline the major points that we, we learned. And that is what organism causes malaria, what organism transmits malaria, state the effects of malaria in pregnant women and children, and state for parts of the body the malaria parasite attacks, and how can malaria be prevented. Thank you very much for listening. 
I'll do the second part of the video. I'll be posting it. Keep our breath. Stay safe from the coronavirus. Stay home as they are, they are, they are indicating. It's still spreading. And it's my prayer none of us will be a victim. Shalom and may God bless us all.